Greetings and welcome to episode number 7. In this episode we will go through and talk a bit about how we are going to be texturing our model. Now since we have two identical boxes with two different unwraps, we are going to create two different textures for these boxes. Now if you do not know what a texture is at this point, I suggest that you check out some of my other videos that will go into more detail about that. Simply put, a texture is an image that contains information of colour, and or bumps, cracks, lights and such. Textures are often saved in a format of a PNG, Targa or a JPEG, which I do not recommend. There are different types of texture maps as they are called. These different texture maps will do different things to your model. Some of these texture maps are called albedo, diffuse, normal, bump, parallax, specular, gloss and a whole lot of others. For example, the normal map or the bump map will enhance your texture's crevices, cracks, so that the viewer or the player will perceive the texture differently. The texture that we are going to be creating is called a diffuse map. Diffuse maps are essentially a normal image. If you were to take your phone or your camera and capture an image, then you could actually call that a diffuse map or a diffuse texture. Now it gets a lot more technical if you dive deeper into the world of what textures really are and how they work, so let's just leave it be for the moment. Alright, so at this point we should try to figure out what type of texture that we are going to be creating. What we do know is that we have a box and we need to create something fitting for the box. The most common thing that people will do is to turn the box into a wooden crate and that is due to a lot of reasons. One of the reasons are that creating a wooden box or a wooden crate texture is actually quite simple to do. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing with both of the boxes. If you feel like being creative and creating something totally different, then please go ahead and experiment. Whatever you end up with will get the point across. So there are three things we can do now. If you have a phone or a camera, you could find something interesting and capture an image of that and use that as a texture. You can also just google around a bit and find a texture on the internet if you want to do that. If you like drawing or painting, you can also make a texture by painting it in Photoshop for example. What I will be doing is to find a texture online and use that as my texture. So what I will do right now is to just go online onto Google and search for something like box texture or wooden texture or create texture or something like that along those lines and see if I can find something interesting to use. So when you find your texture, you just want to bring it into Photoshop and maybe do some changes to it, change some of the colours and modify the texture in some different way. And when you feel that you have done or created the texture that you wanted to use for the actual box, then you don't really have to do anything more. The texture is completely done, you just want to save it down as a target file or a PNG as we talked about before. and when you've done that you can just bring it into 3D Studio Max and then assign that texture to the box. So I'm now going to show you how to do that. So when you open up your scene in 3D Studio Max you can click the M key on the keyboard or click the material editor icon in the toolbar to open up the material editor. Now there are two different types of material editors you can use in 3D Studio Max, the compact one and the slate material editor. We're going to be using the Slate Material Editor because it's working in a similar fashion to the one we're going to be using in Unreal Engine 4. So you might now have a couple of questions on, well, what am I going to be doing in here? Well, it's actually quite simple. We have a texture and we have a model, but we need a material system to handle the texture information and display our texture on the model that we have. So what we're simply going to be doing now is to create the material system that allows us to visibly see the texture on our model. In order for us to do that, you want to go ahead and take a look into the material slash map browser to the left in the material editor. Under the first category called materials and in the subcategory called standard, you then want to drag out the standard material node into the grid. 
Now that we have our standard material in the grid, you want to go back to the map browser or the material browser and go down to the next category called maps. In here, you want to go to the subcategory called standard and drag out the first one called bitmap into the grid. This will now open up a second window and in here you want to navigate to where you save your textures at. When you find your texture, you want to click on it and then click open. This will then apply your texture onto your bitmap. From this point on, you now want to connect your bitmap to the diffuse color in your material. Now double click the material node and go up into the toolbar and click show shaded material in viewport. This will allow you to see the texture in the viewport. When you have done that, you can just drag the material connector onto your model to apply the texture. When you've done that, you're essentially done with everything. If I now go ahead and apply the material that we made onto our second model, you might see that we have a sort of different outcome for this model. And that is because we did a custom unwrap. So we need to create a specific separate texture for this model to make it look good. So what we now want to do is to bring in our template that we had before into Photoshop. And now we can then use the template to make our model look good. So the basic principle in here is that you have to create your texture inside of these green boxes. Anything outside of these boxes will not really do anything. So, so each side of these boxes are one side of the box. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I'm going to be texturing this box now. I'm just going to bring in the template to Photoshop and then use what I already have and make something cool out of it. And you can just follow along to get the point across, but exploration is always really cool when it comes to game development and uh, especially the modeling side and texturing side of things. So just follow along and do something similar and you'll probably end up with something really nice.
All right, so now that you're done with your second texture, you can just bring that into 3D Studio Max and do the exact same thing as we did before and you're all set to go. Alright, cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun to make and if you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you uh, want to do that. Yet again, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.